So now after this, okay, what we have to talk about is we're going to talk about the biosynthesis of the insulin, okay? One more thing, guys. One more thing. And because this is, a, okay, this one is the beta cells of, like, I don't know, hands, okay? And remember this, guys. You know, the main stimulator for synthesizing and secretions of your insulin is glucose, okay? There are other factors that also contribute, such as your ketone bodies or your fats, even amino acids, okay? And other hormones like your GI hormones, like incretins, okay? The incretins are basically the group of the GI hormones, okay? We'll talk about those, like CCK, cholecystokine, okay, or secretin, or, you know, glucagon-like peptide, okay? Or do they do contribute into this, okay? But remember this. This is a one cell here, okay? And the way the biosynthesis of your insulin works is that, you know, at the, you know, let's just quickly talk about, at the DNA, okay? You know, there's a, there's a nucleus. And then in the nucleus, okay, there is what? There is a chromosome number 11. Let's make this as a chromosome number 11. At the chromosome number, number 11, at the short arm of the chromosome number 11, there's a special genes, okay, to make so-called insulin, okay? Now, what they're going to do is that, Okay, the way it works is that, what is going to happen? From the short arms, you know, whenever you get a stimulated, okay, you're going to start synthesizing your insulin, right? But you're going to synthesize, what's going to happen? From the nucleus, you make what? A lot of transcription factors, right? That's what you're going to transcribe, right? So, let's say this is a GNA se sequence, okay, in the cytosol, so, okay? What is going to happen is that, in the cytosol, because the transcription is occurring here, and you're not going to go super detailed about it, remember? The cappings, the five prime capping, and all that kind of happens here too, right? The transcription. Now, once this is going to happen, you know, there are special, like, you know, you guys remember this from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? Let's just make this a rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay? As this, as this, as this transcription sequence, as it's moving out, okay, what is going to happen is that, you know, there's a rough, what is this? This is, let's make this as a, ribosomes are there, okay? This ribosomes are going to read this, this sequence, okay? And when they read the sequence, what is going to happen? They start synthesizing protein. That's what these guys are going to do, okay? They're synthesizing proteins, okay? But remember, this chain contains what? This chain, I, I have to talk about this, okay? This chain they're synthesizing, this is contains what? This one, this one. If you look at this structure right here, you see this structure right here? This is, has N terminal right here, okay? And these, in the pink right here up to here, this is called your signal sequence, okay? And this one right here, you see this one? In the green, this is going to be my your B chains, okay? And this one, the red, you see this one? This is called a C chains, and then this in the black, okay, this is called A chains, okay? This is known as your pre-pro-insulin, okay? That is what these guys are synthesizing, okay? Right now, okay? Pre-pro-insulin, okay? What is pre pro insulin mean? Basically means that it contains the your signal sequence, okay? And signal sequence is bound with what? Your N terminals. And then you see here right here, this alpha chains, okay, is bound with the carboxyl ends into it, okay? And remember this. These guys, this this B chains and A chains are also bound up, you know, with this two sulfide bridges, okay? These are disulfide bonds. And then your alpha chain itself has a like a two Okay, sulfide bridges, like, kind of, like, embedded with it, okay? That's something that you should remember that. Now, whenever this is, whenever these guys are here, okay, what is going to happen is that these ribosomes are reading this and making into this, okay? And then, what's going to happen is that there are also special receptor located, let's say this is my rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? There's special receptor located here, which recognize this signal sequence, okay? And then what is going to happen? When they, when they recognize this, okay? There are certain types of endopeptides enzymes there and in here, located down here. They will cleave this signal sequence and bring inside this compound, okay? When they cleave this signal sequence, it no longer becomes pre pro insulins, okay? Let's write it down. It no longer becomes, first it will become a pre pro insulin. It will no longer become pre pro insulin. It will just become a pro insulin. Okay, that's right. And the pro-insulin contains what? Let's just quickly talk about it. Pro-insulin contains, I'll talk about in three colors. Okay, okay, let's just make it the same color as I view this. Okay, green, black, and then we'll just make it red, okay? So if I make this, okay, you're gonna have, in this one, they contain this one, red, 
okay oh sorry you have a green right here okay and then you continue red here and then you have a black okay that's what it is and these are bound with the disulfide bond these two a chains your a chains and your b chains and this is my c chains okay this is known as your pore insulin okay now then what is going to happen is that in the endoplasmic reticulums what's going to happen is that these guys will even get further cleaved okay because there are what is going to happen in the endoplasmic reticulum is that they're going to go to the post translation modifications okay translation modifications in that case what is going to happen here is that the post and what is going to happen here is that you know these guys even get further cleaved, okay? Because their enzymes located here. These enzymes are called endopeptidase enzymes, okay? They'll further cleave down, and you know what? Those get cleaved down, and those cleave down, and they no longer become, okay, what is going to happen is that when they those get cleaved, and then after the when they get cleaved with endopeptidase, you know, they will kind of come here, and they'll kind of like fuse, you know, like this, and they'll butt off, okay? And then when they butt off, where are they going to go? They go to... Golzi complex, okay? Golzi complex. Because in the Golzi, this is where, okay? In the Golzi, this is where, what, what is going to happen is that they will, okay, if there are, if, even further, if there needs to be, you know, cleaved and modified, that also takes the Golzi, if further needs to be there, okay? So, in this case, there will be, okay, some of them would be, okay, there will be two things, when it gets cleaved, there will be a couple of things will happen. Either, when this, even in the endopause to come, Either they'll, they'll show, okay, let's just make this. This is my, what is that? Okay. You guys remember, okay, I'm just drawing this separate. This is going to be my what? B chain, okay, and this is going to be my A chain, right? And they are bridged by disulfide bond. Okay, that's how I want. Now, and then also you have one more time, which is a red, right? Which is the, this one. Okay, and this is what C chain. Okay, look, this one is a biologically active, or known as your, or, and this has a also sulfide group into here too. Okay, and the alpha A chains. So this is your insulin compound. Okay, and this is known as your C chains or your C peptide. Okay, you have to remember this, and because whole this compound is coincident. The breakdowns of the poor insulin is going to be your insulin and your C peptide. Okay, this is very very important because you know, especially the C peptide is also the C peptide is very important because C peptide and insulin they are okay produce an equal amount. Okay, that is the reason why C peptide is often used for the marker of to see the your beta cell function. Okay, your B cells function. So you remember that. Okay, now. This insulin is a biologically active form, okay? Now, now this will, okay, this guys, okay, let's just write down. Okay, I'm just going to quickly write it down. Here, let's just make this as a, this is going to be my A change right here. Okay, and this is going to be my black change right here. Okay, and you guys remember this, has, there's a disulfide bond into it. And then, obviously, there is going to be, let's say, there's a C peptide right here too. Same thing is happening all down, all down here too, okay? So, Let's just write it down there then for you guys. Okay, quickly talk about this. And then obviously they're right here, okay? And then Golzi, okay? Same thing here. And then, okay, C peptide, okay? Then from the Golzi, what's gonna happen, okay? Later it's gonna go past the exocytosis, okay? Because they're gonna look, what is gonna happen? They're gonna, they're gonna, they're, they're going to be in the cells, they're going to be they are going to be in granules, okay? And later, you know, this guy will release, you know, exercise through the exercise process, they'll, go, they'll release from the, like a cell, okay? So now let's just write down here, okay? Here, yeah. my insulin, my insulin compound, okay? Let's just say, this is my, and then, Okay, and then let's just write down the disulfide bond right here. And then it has a two 
So if I want to like that, okay? Now, it's very, very important concept here, guys. So this is going to be my insulin, biologically active from insulin, and this is going to be my C peptide, okay? So let's write down C genes, okay? Now, design a practicing granules, and later what is going to happen is that, okay, whenever there's a high level of glucose, okay, the secretions of insulin take place, and then C peptide also, okay? But remember, guys, there's also, okay, these, this machinery, okay, not only produces, okay, your insulins and C peptide, okay, they also produce something called a myelin. And you should remember that. It is very, very important, okay? It also produces so called as a myelin, okay? And remember, these insulin, you know, they're actually bound to zinc, okay? So let's just write down in your granules, they have a zinc here, and then about, let's say, insulin here, about six of those insulin are bound with those. Jink. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay? Just letting you know. Okay. That's not why, okay? Because it produces this, okay, this you know, this that's reason why those, you know, pancreas are also known as your, you know, it's a heterocrine organ. Okay, because it has exocrine and endocrine functions, okay? Now one more thing. So so now we just talked about the biosynthesis of insulin, right? Now we have to talk about uh, what is the factor that actually causes, you know, causes to secrete this insulin. That's what we will discuss about it, okay? And you guys know that, okay? Whenever we take our large carbohydrate meals, okay, or whenever you have a glucose, okay, then you release insulin, right? So we have to talk about this. So how does this insulin secretion occur, right? That's what we talk about. So. Let's say whenever you take the glucose, okay? Now let's say this is a beta cell again. Whenever you take the glucose, what is going to happen? You remember the beta cells, what do they have? The beta cells, you have a the transporter right here, okay? The beta cells have this transporter. What are those transporters called? GLOT2. You guys remember that transporter? Okay? It's also located where? Liver, intestines, kidneys. Remember that? Okay? This GLOT2 transporter brings you glucose here. Okay? And then whenever these guys are into the beta cells, what is going to have a special enzymes located here called what? Glucokinase, okay? And the glucokinase, what it does, the glucose, it put a phosphate group into it. When you put a phosphate group into it, what is it? It becomes your glucose 6 phosphate, right? That's what it's going to be. Glucose 6 phosphate. What am I leading into? I'm actually leading into the, you know, the glycolysis path, right? I'm not going to go every step, but you're leading into glycolysis. From the glycolysis, what, because I'm, what I'm doing, I'm doing the glycolysis pathway. And from the glycolysis pathway, what, am I, what is going to happen? You make pyruvate, right? And the pyruvate go to what? Crab cycles, right? Crab cycles. Then from there, we go to what? Oxidative phosphorylation. That's what we do, right? And the mitochondria, because this is happening, let's just make the, the mitochondria right here, okay? This mitochondria right here. And the same thing here, result into later, it was the electron transport chain, right? And then from the electron transport chain, what are you trying to make there? Okay, you make what? Your ATP. Which basically means is that, okay, glycolysis is going to make more ATP, okay? And, the, and why this is important? We'll talk about this. Because, okay, these beta cells, okay, let's write it down here. These beta cells have a like channel down here, okay? These channels are very, very important channels. The reason why these channels are very, very important is because these beta cells, okay, have the channels right here, okay? These channels are called ATP, okay, it's very, very important, sensitive potassium channels. Okay, guys? It's called ATP sensitive potassium channel because these are very, very sensitive to your ATP productions, okay? So remember, you said whenever there's a low energy level, okay, these channels are remained open, okay? Whenever these channels are remained open, what is going to happen? This potassium is always effluxing and going to the what? Extracellular fluid, okay? It's going here. Okay, potassiums are leaving and going to excess oil fluid. Okay, remember, as you guys know, what cells are bags of potassium, right? So, because it has a higher concentration here, okay, so cells are always leaving, okay? I mean, potassiums are always leaving the cells, okay? Whenever the potassiums are leaving the cells, what is going to happen to the electronegativity of the cells, okay? This cell is going to be what hyper hyperpolarized, okay? And whenever there's a hyperpolarized cell, as you guys know, the cell becomes less. Like less active, right? It's it does it's, it does not become active, okay? So it is less active or less functions, okay? That's what is happening. That's what is happening, okay? So 
So because of potassiums, efflux is always happening, okay? Because these guys are very, very sensitive to the productions of ATP, okay? Whenever there's, as I said, whenever there's a low level of ATP, the channels are always, okay, open, and then potassium is always effluxing or going to the cell, causing the cell to be hyperpolarized or making it less, less, less active, okay? But remember, whenever, what's going to happen is that whenever these guys, okay, whenever the glycolysis path with these GLOT2 transporters, okay, bringing this glucose level, and then the gly with the gly running the glycolysis, electron transport chains, okay, you're making a lot of ATP, right? So ratio of, like, look, ratio of ATP, okay, if you make a ratio of what? ATP versus ADP, right? Because ADP is a low energy, right? Will go up, right, ratio, and then ADP will go down, right? That's what is going to happen. So whenever the, the production of ATP goes up, what is going to happen is that this channel started closing. So let's just make this channel right here, okay? So let's just make this a channel right here, okay? The same channel is ATP sensible. This channel closes, okay? So now, when this closes channels, is the potassium is not leaving, okay? If the potassium is not leaving, the cell, just think about it. If, do you think like cell is going to become electronegative? No, right? So it's going to start losing its polarity, okay? So when cells start losing polarity, what's going to happen? Meaning that it's going to start depolarizing, right? So it started, the cell will start becoming more positive, okay? That's what's going to happen. So again, whenever this channel is closed because of the ATP sensitivity, because one of the high level of ATP is there, the channel will close. And then the potassium will remain inside the cells. When the potassium remains the, remain inside the cells, it loses, the cell loses its polarity because it will start become depolarizing and it will become more active. So when you become more active, what is going to happen is that it's so cool that, you know, you know, there is a key channel here located over there. This is a very, very important channel. And what is the channel? These channels are called, you know, voltage gated. Okay, let's just write down. Voltage, okay, voltage gated calcium channels. They will open up, okay? And these are voltage gated, meaning that whenever these cells become positive, okay, that's the only time what happens is that these guys, this cell will, you know, the channels which are sensitive to the voltage, sensitive to the, the, the positive here, positivity here, they will open up, okay? And then when they open up, what happens? Calcium rush into this, okay? The calcium rush into it. And then in that case, what is that? Intracellular, intracellular calcium level goes up. Okay, whenever this intracellular calcium goes up, what is going to happen is that, remember this guys, there remember, there, let's say, look, this insulin right here, come back here, okay. This causes, this, you know, this calcium causes this, you know, causes this, this insulin molecule, the gene, kind of like fuse, okay, fuse here, and causes to have a exocytosis process, okay, and these guys will, Release, okay, we'll just write an IN for our case, right? I'll just write I for insulin, and then also C peptide, okay? That's how it's going to release, okay? That's what's going to happen. Now, you should remember, guys, one more thing, okay? Whenever this insulin or C peptide releases, okay, you know, your insulin, okay, gets, insulin half-life is very, very short, okay? It gets destroyed rapidly, okay? It is just, like, they're also like enzymes, especially in livers, okay? Because liver has an insulinase enzyme. Insulinase, liver and kidney, okay? And then it destroys the insulin, okay? Rapidly, okay? So the half-life for insulin is about like six minutes or so, okay? So because it destroys so rapidly, you know, you know, we typically don't use your insulin as a, you know, clinically, clinical marker to measure the, the functions or the the functions of the beta cell. We actually use the the C peptide because C peptide half life is longer. Plus, the, your liver does not you know extrude out the C peptide as fast as it does for the insulin. Okay, that's why we use this C peptide. Okay, it's very important. You know, for the marker of okay, it's a biomarker for the you know to see the the functions of this the beta cells. Okay. And also, and this, some of the studies also showed that, okay, this also works in, you know, productive C-peptide also work in those endothelial cells to produce your nitric, nitric oxide too. So that way it maintains the vasodilations, okay. So that way it maintains the good, you know, 
blood circulations. Okay, but remember one more thing: the CPAP is very, very important. Or clinically, the biomarker to see, to understand or to see the functions of the the beta cells. Okay. Now, now after this, okay, we are, we t we talked about this so far. Now, what are the other factors that is actually causes to release of your you know sec or secretions of your insulin? As we said, one is the glucose level, right? Same thing happened with the let's write down increase level of your right increase level of you know fatty acid in plasma, right? Increase level of protein, okay? This is all resulting to it. Not only this, okay. Remember, neuronal also they have, okay, acetylcholine. All right, let's just talk about this. Whenever there is a release of acetylcholine, remember, like acetylcholine is parasympathetic. Okay, it releases what from the vagus nerve. It releases acetylcholine, right? And acetylcholine has a receptors on the beta cells right here. Okay, these are seven pass member receptors. Okay, that is going to, you know, result into the activations of. I'm not going to go super detailed about it, but you know because. Oh, we will talk about this, you know, the cell signaling, okay, pathways. But result in the acetylcycline, result in the activations of, you know, your, your PLC, okay. So this PLC pathway, okay, what is that going to ultimately result into is that, okay, result into, you know, activations of IP3 and your DAG, okay. And they also release the, you know, they also, okay, what did they do? They do increase concentrations of also intracellular calciums, right? That's what these guys are gonna do. And whenever this intracellular calcium level goes up, what is gonna happen? This will go and fuse and more your insulin release. Okay, not only this, okay? This is neuronal. Not only this, you know, some other places, like for example, let's talk like GI hormones. Remember one more thing, guys, you know. You know, one thing that I'm gonna quickly tell you guys is that whenever you take food intake, right? Oral glucose load, okay, that is gonna have a more effect on your GI hormones, okay, to secret insulin rather than if you give intravenously to someone, okay. So the GI upload of glucose, okay, or like fatty acid or let's say amino acid, when it comes here, if you come back here, these these cells, okay, like right here, let's just say, okay, you guys remember from the like, GI systems, okay, there, there are a bunch of like GI hormones that get releases, okay? And these GI hormones are called incretins, okay? What are they called? Incretins. Okay? And then what are these incretins are? These are the stimulations, okay? Whenever the nutrients are coming in, okay? These GI cells will react, okay? And when they react, they react in a more in chemical way, right? In a hormonal way. So they started producing, okay? Some of the hormones, like remember that. CCK is one, okay? Remember your glucagon, like peptide number one, okay? Or there's also called, okay, your glucose dependent, okay, insulotropic, okay, peptide, GIP. Or they also call this as a gastric inhibiting peptide, okay? Not only this, they're also like your secretin, okay? These are some of those incretins, okay? Those are the GI hormones. And they also regulate actually secretions of your insulin. Because if I want to quickly talk about this, okay, this CCK, okay, they have receptors located here too, okay. And that CCK also actually lead into, okay, the beta cell, lead into the activations of the phospholipid C, okay. And then result into, into the, you know, intracellular level of IP3 and DAG going up, okay. Ultimately, there's more calcium is going up, okay. Not only this, okay. You have this, what is this? You have this glucagon-like peptide, okay? These guys also have receptor here, okay? But these guys receptor also same thing. But these are also seven pass member receptors, okay? But these guys, okay, the receptors is not bound with the GQ pathway, but they're bound with the your GS pathway, ultimately result into okay, let's just write down here. Okay, let's write down here. Adenocyclase, okay? That's what's gonna happen. Ultimately, what is going to happen, level of cyclic AMP will go up and then ultimately result into what? Activation of more protein kinase A and then resulting into the, what is going to happen, the more level of your calcium going up intracellularly and releasing your insulin. Okay, that's what is happening. And this is usually happens whenever you have a large amount of, a, you know, or you have, whenever you have a 
whenever our food died, okay, that's the that's the time, okay. These incretins are released from the GI and they you know help secrete okay insulin by doing this activity, okay. Now, so let's just quickly review what are those the cases, right? You know, you have a one neuronal which is from the acetylcholine, vagus nerve and all, right? Incretins like CCK, glucagon like peptide, or this glucose insulotropic depend glucose dependent insulotropic peptide secretin, okay. So some of those are incredits, okay, that help to secrete this one. Not only this, okay, even whenever you're in a stress level, okay, whenever you're very, very stressed, even in that time too, like for example, whatever stress, the cortisol level goes up, right? And the cortisol also helps secrete your your glucose because these receptors are located here with the GS pathway, resulting into High level of cytokine, uh, high level of cyclic AMP going up and the activation of protein kinase cell. That's also it does, okay? Not only this, even though epinephrine too, because, and this is something that you guys have to remember this, okay? This is a very, very important concept here. This epinephrine has a receptor here, but, but this is bound to the beta 2 receptors. So beta 2. And this is also resolved into, okay, look here, activations of adenocyclase and going to the protein kinase cell, okay? And this also helps secretions of you are insulin, but remember one more thing. Norepinephrine, okay, whenever we exercise, okay, let's say, but norepinephrine has a receptor located here, in, even in the beta cell, but they're bound with alpha, okay, and these alpha arginine receptors are with the GI, okay, meaning it's, it's going to inhabit, okay, inhabit the secretions of insulin, okay, again. The, the norepinephrine receptor, which are which are alpha, alpha adrenergic receptors, okay. Norepinephrine is going to bind with alpha adrenergic receptor, but in here, okay, in the alpha adrenergic receptor, that is going to lead into, okay, inhibitions or inhibitory, or it's not going to release insulin, okay. But if epinephrine binds to this, you know, beta two receptor, it's going to secrete more insulin. It's a very very important concept, and it's very different, okay. Now, but but the thing is that it's just that more receptors are located in the beta cells for the norepinephrine. So it has a more inhibitory function than, you know, it has a secretion function. That's the only difference. Now, not only this, okay, there are also like some of those like channels, okay. Like for example, you know, this ATP ATP sensitive potassium channels. If you give like a drug, like a, a sulfonyl urea, okay, let's say sulfonyl urea okay what is going to happen that's going to inhabit the channels when you inhabit the channel what is going to happen okay this cells is going to be more polar or more more positive right so when you're more positive the voltage get it up your calcium channels opens up and then more secretions of your insulin right not only this the mannose which are glucose right glucose mannose all that will lead into the secretions of your insulin right now not only that okay there is also this, for this beta I was just talking about, right? That where epinephrine binds to beta. There is also this beta to arginic inhibitor. Like if you give a drugs, that is a beta arginic okay inhibitor. Like for example, a pro, pro let's write it down pro pranolol. Okay, when you give this drug, what is going to happen? That if you give, that means the secretion of the insulin will reduce. That's what will happen. Okay, now. After this, okay, these are some of the factors, okay, that is causing to synthesis of your insulin. But if you talk about what are the factors that is going to decrease the secretion of insulin, okay, one is that whenever, if you're fasting, okay, let's just write down. If you're fasting, write it down here. If you're fasting, okay, then you don't want your blood glucose level to, fasting means you don't want, like, you know, insulin to release, okay. Or let's say when you're exercising, okay, when you're exercising, okay, when you're exercising, okay, that's the also time. You don't want your insulin to, you know, really insulin to be released, okay. Exercise fasting, okay, or if you give a drugs, uh, you know, that's going to keep opening this uh, ATP sensitive channels open, okay, making this uh, cells more even, you know, hyperpolarized, you know. Those, any drug that can lead into, that is also what contribute Decrease secretions of what? Your insulin, right? That That's something that you have to remember, okay? And even, I just talked about it, this drug is like beta-propanol, okay? That is going to be, okay? 
So these are some of the factors, okay, that is result into the decreased secretions of your insulin.